<laughs> Always my favorite kinds of videos where I start off with, no, you're wrong. Windows on ARM. I want to start this video off with a call to action immediately. Question, please drop some comments down in uh, down underneath this video. Who do you think is going to be the first in 2024 to drop a new laptop or convertible tablet running Windows on ARM, but with those new Qualcomm chips, the X elites? I'm personally torn. We just saw Microsoft cut back on their Surface division, and we know Lenovo is very aggressive about putting out alternative form factors for computers, but I wouldn't discount in a Seuss or an HP or a Dell jumping in to get ahead of the lower power but higher performance ARM chip revolution. That was years too early to this conversation. I was at Newegg talking to HEDT system builders in videos on their channel about, well, hey guys, what if your next laptop had an ARM chip? And so I feel particularly validated that that's the direction Apple went with their M series process, their Apple Silicon. No, Windows on ARM is pretty good. It's a full-fledged operating system that's running currently on lower performance, lower power hardware, and it gets stonking incredible battery life when we switch over to these little ARM chips. But turning to this, this uh, this is the Robo Incala, and it's very similar to the Surface, uh, the Surface Pro 9 SQ3, which is running that little Snapdragon 8CX chip, which is, okay, we're talking sort of a two-generation-old Core i3, but it's a full-fledged version of Windows, and it can install a lot of that classic legacy software in an emulation layer, so you do take a performance hit, but those programs still work. And because it's full-fledged Windows 11, it is also capable of running Android apps in the Android subsystem and Linux apps in the Linux subsystem. You can install Ubuntu in Windows and you actually get faster performance on Linux apps than you do on a lot of your Windows apps. I, I love showing it off. Like GIMP has compatibility for ARM in their, in their Windows installer, but it just runs faster if you use it in Ubuntu inside Windows 11. I don't think we have a Windows on ARM problem. The software has been running phenomenally well for the majority of my computer use situations as the operating system has been updated and refined. The big problem with Windows on ARM isn't Windows on ARM, it's a performance per dollar issue. I really liked the Surface Pro 9 SQ3, but it's a pretty high price point for performance that roughly circles a two generation old Core i3. And it's one of the reasons why I keep coming back to this, which is the Robo Incala, where you can get a tablet PC, OLED screen, uh, stylus compatible. You, you can find configurations where it comes with this keyboard blade. The keyboard blade can work connected or wireless. 512 gigs of storage. The 512 gig is upgradable. You can pop this thing open and put in a new SSD. And it's pretty close to the price of a Galaxy Tab. So you can can shop the nicest Android tablet and it'll do Android-y things just fine, or you can shop something that is a full-fledged Windows operating system that can also run Android apps and Linux apps. And that is a part of this piece conversation where the second we bring up Windows on ARM, I know I get a bunch of people that come out of the woodwork to say, but it doesn't support my legacy apps. But they're not looking at the wide range, the spectrum of devices out there in low power x86 and how we've got a split in Chromebooks that run x86 and run ARM chips and consumers don't seem too bothered about what those things have to offer. And that's where I get some fair criticisms. Oh, but it's too expensive for what you get. I'm leaning towards agreeing, but that doesn't mean we can't shop other solutions that bring that price to performance ratio a little more in line with what we look at in premium Android land. And in a mixed marketplace where consumers are as likely to be living exclusively out of a web browser or jumping into a lot of legacy applications from past generations of Windows, Windows on ARM, I think we've got an operating system that can cater to a wide range of potential use cases. I don't think the software is the problem, I think the price to performance is the issue we need to address. So I would love to hear your thoughts. Who do you think is gonna do it first? I'm actually buying fewer phones this year for my testing because I genuinely wanna try and cover a few of these laptops coming out as we start looking at ARM for Windows. I think it's gonna be a very good transition for consumers, just like we saw with MacBooks. I'm very bullish on Windows on ARM. When we get new hardware, we can start fighting a more price to performance 
comparable battle. I expect the tastiest of hot takes down in the comments below, and maybe smash that bell on your way down to comment, but if you really care about your favorite content creators, also look at other ways that you can subscribe to their content, because we know the YouTube algorithm is standing on our necks right now. Blogs, social media, you can even fire up an old classic RSS reader and subscribe to your favorite YouTube channels there, and then have a perfectly up-to-date feed of everything your favorite creators are putting out. I don't know why I mimed having a phone in my hand when I could have just put a phone in my hand. I'm real good at the YouTubes. So folks, as always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing in any way that you choose to subscribe. All the support lately has been absolutely fantastic. Those of you clicking on links underneath my video in the description or hitting my home site, somegadgetguy.com, or maybe you're joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, basically at some gadget guy everywhere. But these days I'm trying to spend a bit more time on the Mastodons, uh, sharing some photos on the Flickers, a little less so on the uh, Instagrams and the Twitters, definitely not on the Twitters. And I will catch you all on the next video.